So this video is actually going to be personal. Most of the videos on this channel are usually about my business, but this one is about a little love thing that I did for my husband. And I love to cook, and I decided to cook him a special meal because he's always doing such wonderful things for me. So I'm gonna show you how I reverse sear a tomahawk steak. Let's go. Wow, this shirt is bright. For everyone who knows me, I'm Emily Ann Page, and I am going to show you a steak that I am making for my husband. It's called a tomahawk steak because it has a huge rib bone in it, and my husband is always making amazing food for me. He's like the best. Literally, no one can cook better than him, and he loves food. It's one of his love languages, so I bought big old steaks. And I'm gonna make it for him so when he comes home, he's gonna be surprised to have a hot, delicious steak. And this steak, I measured it, is two and a half inches thick. So it's a big, fat steak. I have preheated the oven to 275 and preheated the pan because I was told some on some TV show that that's actually really helpful. And I'm gonna cook it for one hour at 275. Holy moly, that man. One, two, voila. Watch the bone, see the bone? It's gonna be delicious. The timer is set for one hour. Now the other thing I'm going to do is pull out a little tool that helps me to get the temperature that's in the other door. Because although I did get instructions from the butcher exactly how to do it, I don't trust myself. So this little tool should allow for me to figure out whether the meat in the center is medium rare or not. And it's got this cool little thing. It will tell me the temperature when I stick inside of the meat. So I'm gonna do that within a half an hour to start checking to see what the temperature is. So after I do it for one full hour, I'm gonna throw it on the grill. So I'm gonna heat up the barbecue and I'm gonna flash grill it for, I think he said three to four minutes on each side. So that way we get those cool stripes. So I have to get the temperature of the barbecue up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. While mommy does it, she has a margarita. You're gonna go check on the steaks. It's only 20 minutes or 30 minutes in. I've got a feeling that they're already ready. Okay, so we have 100 on the big old guy <clears throat> and 103 on the other. So that means we still probably have like 20 minutes. And after doing some more Google search, I'm probably not going to put it on the grill. I will probably just pan sear it. I'm also pulling out some additional accoutrements to make sure that this is utterly delicious meal. I have some asparagus from Costco. That's why they're so ridiculously juicy and gorgeous and they are very affordable. I have to chop off these gristly little ends. So I'm gonna wash them, I'm gonna chop them at a slant and then I'm gonna grill them in a pan. That way the pan is also very nice and hot for when I'm completely done with the steaks, in which case I'll transfer the steaks, like all these onto a plate and then the steaks um, into the hot pan. Now I'm going to wash the asparagus. What do you call the plural of asparagus? Asparagi. I'm rinsing them off. Shaking off the water. And now onto the chopping block. I'm using this beautiful chopping board that Dylan and I received for our wedding as a gift from our friends. And this really cool knife. <clears throat> Dylan loves this brand. This guy makes these really cool handles. Makes them all himself. So, cut off the edges and we throw the rest of the stuff into the bin. Boop be doop, make sure that everything looks fresh. Yep, <clears throat> now our soldiers are ready for the frying pan. Ooh yeah, I love a good gas stove. Whenever I'm cooking chicken or steak, I usually use the same pan over and over again, as long as there's no sauces, because why not? And this is a scan pan, which after lots of testing, this has been the best pan we've ever purchased because it's not difficult to clean afterwards. So we have the flame heating and this butter is a Belgian butter that's been all over TikTok. It's really creamy. It has chunks of like sea salt inside of it. And it was $8 at Central Market, which is a stupid amount of money. So if I can't buy this one, I usually buy Kerrygold because it's from Ireland. And it's also significantly more creamy and delicious than American butter. Prove me wrong, I'm not saying I'm right, but after my taste test of eating raw butter on bread, that's what I prefer. Boop. This is so gorgeous. Like, can you see that there's marbling here on the butter? Here come our asparagus. <laughs> I don't want any of them to not be inside of the pan and actually touching the 
side, so I may have to cook some of them a little bit later so they can all kind of cook evenly. You guys will wait. So I just checked the steaks. One of them is at 120 and we want it to be at 130 before we take it off. So it's almost done. It's the center of the steaks. And then the other one is only at 110. So I'm gonna take that first skinny guy off and put that on this pan as soon as I'm done with the asparagus. And while I wait for things to cook, I'm gonna tell you why I want to make these nice things for Dylan. Every morning, Dylan makes me a hand brewed, hand poured cup of coffee from one of his many different exclusive coffee beans that he buys from all over the world. He is a connoisseur of good food. And one of the love languages, the you know, ways that he expresses his love language is through acts of service. So he will make me a cup of coffee in the morning when I feel tired and it's so sweet. <laughs> It's so sweet. I told him, I'll use a machine. I'll go make crappier coffee. And he's like, no, I want you to have good coffee. So he makes that for me in the morning, which is amazing. Not every morning, but a lot of mornings, majority. And he also makes food in such an amazing way. I can't even begin to compare to the perfection that he is able to achieve. He's really good at attention to detail and I'm good at attention to the heart and the big picture, the meaning of it all. I can't possibly cook food as talented and as perfect as he can. So when I try, it never turns out as good, but I know that he appreciates when I try. He appreciates things where people put a lot of thought into it. And so thick old steaks, amazing high-class butter, beautiful thick asparagus, those things are excellent. Whoever crafted them, the farmers that made those things happen, put a lot of love and care into it. So I know he's gonna appreciate this. And it's my attempt to give something back to him that's at least slightly as awesome as the stuff that he gives to me. I think this meal will be really great. It's the ingredients, they're natural, they're fresh, they're expensive because they're like the best quality. So if you buy a great steak, you don't need to add much more. There's no special sauces, there's no special sauteing method. It's pretty simple, like anyone can do it, which is great. So hopefully he enjoys it and feels that I love him and sees my act of service as one that is expressing how much I care about him the way that he expresses how he cares about me. I can hear these whistling. I can hear my stories whistling. So I like them to be a little bit brown like that, but I also want them to be soft. And it's a challenge to get that to happen because you sometimes need them to steam. So sometimes I add a little bit of water into this to help it to cook faster. This was a gift from my friend Holly. Steam, lots of steam. I'm also cooking up some root vegetables and some potatoes. Now, of course, I bought these. <laughs> I bought these pre-made because I don't have time. I got a job, I got a full-time job. And these are actually probably better than I could ever make them myself. We have some rutabaga, some parsnips, some mashed potatoes I'm gonna heat up in the microwave. So ingredients are absolutely everything. And one of my favorite things of all time is molten salt. They are crystallized flakes that you can top and finish any meal with. So it's almost like freshly cracked pepper where you get this weirdly better flavor, like noticeably significant, like flavor bump just by using different pepper you get that same thing by using this finishing salt and if I were to pull it out but if you can look inside you can see there's actually like crazy thick crystals and I don't know what it is about the texture of the salt or if it's just that they use a really great purifying process it tastes better so I'm gonna pull these asparagus these asparagi <laughs> I'm joking I know it's not called asparagi put it on the plate and then top it off with a little bit of the sea salt it's a freshly cracked pepper. We already cooked it in that amazing butter. It's gonna taste amazing. I already know. So excited. Malden's like, put it on your wish list. See, look at how beautiful these are. I love it when it's a little bit charred and it's a little bit al dente. So it's still crisp, but not too crisp. You know, you want it a little, to bend a little bit when you shake it. And when it's all done like that, you can put it on the plate. It's gonna keep cooking. I'm gonna finish up this asparagus with some sea salt oh yeah delicious again there's nothing like freshly cracked pepper I don't know what it is just like the molten salt it just takes it to the next level 
if you're using pre-ground, it's totally kosher, it's totally okay, but it will taste different if you actually grind it from real kernels. And did you know that Dylan and I met when we were super late in life? So he and I got married when we were, I was 38 and he was 37, that's right, Cougar Town. We had both been running our own businesses, which kept us very distracted. Running a business is like having a little toddler and it consumes your entire life because it's constantly wobbling, about to die. Sometimes it's actually walking and you're so proud, but the next minute it's running up the street and you have to go chase it. And you can't prioritize your self-care. It's very unstable and people underestimate how hard it is. I've seen other people start businesses and actually close their business, not because they weren't good at what they did, they were actually better than I am, but they had never practiced and focused on sales as a key fundamental foundation for building a business and making it survive. You have to win clients. And I've seen people who are really good at sales but very bad at what they do succeed longer than people who are better at what they did but very bad at sales. So it's interesting, no one talks about that, but sales is actually the foundation of a good entrepreneurial venture, of a good entrepreneur. You have to study it. Not everyone is like excellent naturally at sales. I think I've got an outgoing personality. It's easier for me because I like people. I like talking to them, but I do believe every person can be good at sales. Dylan's an introvert and he's a great example. He focused on consistency, showing up in someone's life, being authoritative, being an expert in someone's life, caring about them and applying facts that he learned to their career. So he and I had completely different businesses. We ended up being able to both survive. It was difficult though for about eight years, each of us. He did 10, I did eight before we met each other. And once we met, actually both of our businesses became more stable and made more money. And it's because I think I helped him with some vision stuff. He helped me with some stability stuff. So it was amazing. When we met, it was the right time, like divine God-given moment. We fell in love and got married. It was really late though in life. So I was 38. He was 37 and yeah, this take is done. I'm finishing up some of these asparagus that didn't get cooked in the last run. They're gonna be so good. Turning down the heat a little bit, using the time while the other steaks are finishing. But since the timer just went off, I'm gonna start moving the other steak out of the oven. Appreciate for a moment this madness. Oh yeah. Okay, so I threw some of the fat from the steak into this pan, and we have this last bit of asparagus coming here into this plate, joining its brethren, mix it all up so it gets some of the sea salt on it. Oh yeah, delicious. I got the flame going, and this pan is super hot, and now the other steak is about to enter the pan. So according to the book, it says we should add an extra little bit of fat. I don't know why, but butter and steak go good together. And here we go. Timer on. We will cook this for three minutes on one side and three minutes on the other side, just to be sure. It's 144. I don't want it to get too cooked on the inside because I like medium rare, so I'm gonna make it short, super short. Okay, they said I should not let it be 144. <laughs> it's getting too cooked on the inside, so I'm gonna heat it up faster so that way I can sear the left, the outside. This process is called reverse sear, so we cooked it first, now we're searing it. So I'm turning up the heat, I'm gonna get this thing locked and loaded. If you look at it, you can see there's these beautiful juices on the outside. So I'm just letting it cook so that it seals at the bottom, then I will let it rest before I actually serve it. I overseared it. It's going off of the stove and onto the cutting block so it can cool. And on goes this one. You can see that the moisture is coming to the top. So I want to seal in the moisture by doing it this way. Super hot heat. That stand pan doing its magic. So I'm a little nervous because I kind of overcooked this side. The other side is not overcooked, but I'm gonna check the internal temperature really quick. 
Oh yeah, it's 160, that means it's probably a well done steak. 138, 150, 160. Cool down, steak, cool down. <laughs> I probably overcooked this one. Oops. You can see in the background, I've got the other steak cooking. So to make sure I don't overcook it, I'm gonna actually flip it a lot earlier than I did the other one. Even though it's significantly thicker, it's probably a quarter of an inch thicker than the other one. This one is 2.75 inches and the other one is 2.5 at the start. I think that was a good choice because that was pretty seared on this side. <laughs> so I think this one's going to be nice and be rare because it's still within the 130, 140 zone. The other one is definitely 150, 160, so it's going to be more well done. Turning up the heat and bringing it to the cutting board. Woo -woo. I'm going to pretend like I actually used my own skills to make these potato and root vegetable dishes. What do you think? Looks great. I made, I made you a tomahawk steak. Holy cow. Wow. <laughs> and we did a reverse sear. I've never done a reverse sear. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Do you feel loved? Very loved. That was the objective. Oh yeah, this butter. Are you happy? Can I, can I film your first taste? Mm -hmm. The dog is waiting for your first bite. Well done, babe. Well done. So well excited. done. Really? Yeah, it's good. You liked it? It's pretty good. Good job. So all in all, Dylan loved his meal, and I was really glad that I did it because it made him feel special. Well, and I also learned how to do a reverse sear. I love cooking. I love learning. I love every day growing and doing something different. And that's one of my favorite things about cooking is that you can learn something very quickly within one day period of time, and it's something that people get to enjoy and appreciate. So cooking is one of the ways I love to give back to people and show how much I love them. So this little gift is one thing I'm gonna keep working on doing is making special meals for Dylan because this was a complete hit and he felt loved. That was the goal. So I hope you enjoyed this little vlog style video. It's unique to my Start to Sold channel because normally I just talk about business, but I wanted you to see a side of my personal life. It's no me a little bit better. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And of course, leave comments if you learned anything about cooking, if you've ever tried to reverse sear, if you want to get a tomahawk steak sometime soon. They're delicious, highly recommend. I got mine from Central Market. Highly, highly recommend. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.